Part 2, The Tesseract. To begin our examination of the four space manifolds based on geometric polygons, besides the simple circle expanded from the singular origin point down the center of a line, we look first toward the tesseract or hypercube. The three space shadow of the four space hypercube is the regular cube with six square shaped sides, twelve edge lines, and eight corners where three edge lines connect three square faces all at 90 degree angles. The standard terms of measurement for the dimensions implied by these three edge intersecting corners oriented at right angles to one another are length or distance, breadth or width, and depth or volume. The hypercube is a symbolic depiction of a single cube changing over time and is represented by two cubes overlapping. The standard form of the hypercube is as one cube nested within another cube. This depiction is an optical illusion symbolizing the true shape of a hypercube, however is itself merely a flat 2D shadow of the true form of such. A real four-space hypercube is comprised of twin cubes, both of equal volume, while in this standard symbolic depiction in 2D of the shape of the 4D manifold, the inner cube appears to have smaller volume than the larger cube that it is nested within. Because of the intersection of the three vertices at the origin of length, width, and depth, there are three shadows in two space that can be cast to show the true form of the four space hypercube. The first was the nested hypercube seen from above one of the midpoints of one of its sides. The second is this combination where one cube sits on top of a second of exactly equal area which signifies the shadow cast from a hypercube when viewed above the midpoint of one of its linear edges. This format is called the hypercube's antipode position. The third form of 2D shadow cast by the 4D hypercube is the tesseract. The outline in flat 2 space of the tesseract is octagonal or 8-sided and 8-pointed. This outline contains an arrangement of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines that forms at the center of the shape a smaller star pattern called an octogram. The octagon and octogram are, to the 4D hypercube, the equivalent to, in two space, the line and dot. The octogram contained within the octagon itself also contains an octagon, and this pattern can be self-replicated on smaller and larger scales infinitely, because it is a gnomon a form of parallelogram similar to the more organic patterns of fractals. The apparently octagonal shadow cast by the four-space tesseract is also an optical illusion that symbolizes the dual cube arrangement. In this depiction we see that one cube, shown in red, is oriented at a 45 degree angle to the other cube, shown in blue. As each corner of one cube shifts along this angle to connect to the same corner of the other cube, it forms the lines inside the octagon that define the 2D depiction of the tesseract. The pattern depicted in this flat 2D shape is merely the shadow of a hypercube seen from above one of its corners in four space. Because the 4D hypercube spans as a measure of distance, the change we consider a temporal duration by using the motif of two cubes of the same volume. 
It changes the shape of the shadow it casts in 3D by motion, just as in 2 space its shadow is determined by orientation to the hypercube of the point of view. The hypercube's shadow in 3 space thus appears to transform endlessly, just as in 2 space it had exactly 3 shadows cast from different points of view. While the nested antipode and tesseract hypercube patterns in 2D reflect the faces, edges, and corners of the 3D shapes length, width, and depth form in 4D, the true form of the tesseract expresses the fourth dimensional direction or change over time as motion in the orientation between two equal volumed cubes. Here is a depiction of the motion of the tesseract through itself as one cube trades places with the other by both passing through one another. Here is another simulation of a hypercube to demonstrate the change in size between the two cubes as they pass through one another affects motion using a sphere moving forward in a line to signify the standard arrow of entropy, i.e. time. Because the hypercube is a four-space manifold object, it is not visually depictable without using motion. It is commonly known as having countless 2D visual depictions describing shadows cast by the hypercube when it is seen from various angles. These sorts of 2D pictures hint at further applications of studying the tesseract shadows by applying them to a 3D model as directions of motion. When we use this method, we may see that there are four axes of the 3D shadow of the four space cube. The first two space shadow we follow as a direction of motion along an axis in the 3D shadow of the 4D hypercube shows the single cube rising vertically. Next we see the hypercube's motion along the antipode angle where it elongates to the length of the double cube at its midpoint rising up the vertical axis. The next form of spatial shadow we see cast within the three space model is a triangle morphing along the horizontal axis. The fourth iteration of motion inside the 3D hypercube's shadow is also along the horizontal axis. This morphing process is called a slice that cuts from corner to corner of the 3D shadow of a tesseract. At one corner it begins as a tetrahedron, expands in its midpoint into an octahedron, and then collapses again to a tetrahedron at the opposite corner. The presence of the dual tetrahedrons at opposite corners of the tesseract slice is significant because it implies the presence of another form of hypershape, the hypertetrahedron, shown here as one tetrahedron of smaller volume nested inside another of larger volume, signifying the higher dimensional equation of their volumes as change along the invisible axis of time. The same nesting of the hypercube shows it from above one side and is one of the three such axial shadows in 2D cast from the hypercube because the cube connects three edged sides at each corner. A tetrahedron has a total of only four sides with each corner connecting three edged faces like the cube. The nested tetrahedrons of different volumes show the 4D hypertetrahedron's 3D shadow from above one of its sides. A stalactahedron is the co-origin point nesting of two equal volume tetrahedrons. It is the equivalent for the hypertetrahedron 
of the equal volume pair of cubes at antipode for the hypercube. It shows the hypertetrahedron from above one of its edges. The final form of shadow cast by the hypertetrahedron explains why it appears within the slice from corner to corner of the hypercube. Because a stalactohedron can be formed between eight equidistant corners, it can also be nested within a 3D cube. When this is done and the shadow of the form is cast onto a 2D plane space, the shape it assumes is this, a unicursal hexagram formed of two pentagrams, one upright above and one inverse below, surrounded by a hexagon. The exterior circumference of the hexagon is formed from the shadow cast by the cube. When this is removed, the interior lines that remain connecting the six points are the shadow in a 2D plane space of the stelloctahedron in 3D. This signifies the cubical hypertetrahedron's shadow when cast from a point of view above one of its corners. This is also why it appears in the diagonal slice from corner to corner in the hypercube.